When building AI applications, it's very important to communicate to the user what's happening when AI calls certain tools and what's actually happening under each tool. What, uh, for example, database calls it did and stuff like this. And I want to show you how you can implement that with AI SDK. And I want to show you one very interesting pattern that I didn't see many people talk about. And I wanted to really share it because I think it's OP. And uh, if you're using tools and um, you have intermediate steps in each of your tools, you should use that. So let's take this as an example. I have a read health memory tool. And basically what it did, uh, what it does is just uh, calls a database. In my case, it's just a local JSON file and it searches for uh, health information. But you can imagine in a real application, you would, for example, wait for the call to complete. And in the meantime, you want to show to the user the loading, loading spinner or something like this. Or you can maybe even have multiple steps before you even complete this, uh, before you even get to the completion of the tool. And it can become very annoying if you have multiple steps in your tools. And for example, each tool can take, um, I don't know, like 30 seconds. If you have, for example, uh, different AI call inside of your tool, it can get very annoying. And to simplify that, you can do it uh, with two ways. First, uh, first possible solution to that uh, is to implement a custom data part in your messages. In the SDK v5, they introduced UI message uh, type, uh, which is basically an array of parts that, uh, that are possible in your messages. Uh, it could be a text as a just text. It could be some different custom data. Um, and you can actually customize the type to make sure that you're reusing the same type on the back end on, and on the front end. One possible solution to the problem with the tools is to implement your own type for the UI message. You can call it like my UI message. And here you can specify, for example, read memory and you can specify like different states. That could be one solution. And then you can on the front end reuse that. And if we go to our chat here in our messages, uh, we are going to have a, and here inside of our parts. So for example, here I can get the type part dot type equals to data read health memory and uh, from that you can get all the data inside of your uh, data part but then you also need to pass to your tools a writer and when you have a lot of tools uh, it gets very messy to manage all the states of each tool inside of your one single ui message type so recommended approach to that when you have multiple steps in your tools is to not do that actually it could be a possible solution that it works, but it gets very clunky after some times, after some time. So what you need to do instead of what you should do instead is to, so here I have my tool and it's very interesting. What we need to do is to define this execute function. So execute function is basically uh, a tool, a function that we are executing on our machine when AI calls a tool. And so what we need to do is to define execute function as a generator function. Let me show you how to do it. You need to do it like that. You need to define uh, execute function, call it async because we are calling a synchronous function inside of it. And now it's gonna yell at us because we're not yielding anything. Um, and so what generator function allows us to do is to return intermediate steps. What, uh, what we need to do is, uh, for example, here inside of our execute function, we can do yield. And here we can return, for example, state, in our case, loading state, and we can def define data. So we were yielding those intermediate steps. And let's say we're going to yield that as well. And so, yeah, you can actually define those <clears throat> intermediate steps inside of your tools and not uh, make it uh, as a data type where you need to manage all of that. It all belongs to your tool that uh, you're executing. And the cool thing is, is that because it's a generator function, we can actually infer types from it. So if we go to our chat here, for example, here I have my, where is my tool? 
here, my tool, read health memory tool. And if I look at part dot output, what you're gonna see is that we have all those uh, yield functions, all those uh, return yield uh, things all typed. And if I believe if I do as const like that, it should be a, yeah, so it, it as you can see, it gets, it becomes a success or loading as I defined inside of my execute function. And yeah, because this is a generator function, TypeScript can actually infer the types from it. And we can get all those type safe uh, magic that we want to have in our tools and with our tools. And the cool thing is, is you don't now need to define anything outside of your tool. What belongs to the tool is a tool and all the types are inside of your tools. And based on that, you can actually render different states right? You can pass those states in your health, uh, in your like a tool where you're rendering it. And you can, based on that state, you can show different UI. And that's pretty much it. It's very important to implement if your tools have async calls in them for database or other searches. Uh, don't make your users uh, miserable and just show them some loading states and show them what's actually happening under the hood. If you found this helpful, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.